This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through your 2019 Autumn Ridge Model 21 RBS. I'm here on the door side of the trailer at the rear. As you can see, you've got a power awning. And of course, is the furnace vent. You've got uh, plugs to uh, with 110 uh, AC to plug in your appliances outside. This range hood vent uh, needs to be opened if you're running the range hood fan over the stove. So you just open it by going like this. You lock it like that. So if you, you want it to flap, flap freely if you're um, using the vent or the the rain or the the <laughs> the range hood fan that's over the stove all right now this is there's two ways to get water to your trailer the most common one is city water that that is on the other side of the trailer I'll show you when we get there this is uh, the fill for a fresh water tank that's on the trailer uh, therefore you could camp at campgrounds that do not have plumbing on a campsite so you could pre-fill this uh, tank through here and then there's an electric water pump inside that allow you to to pump the water everything works just like you have regular city water so you always have that option generally speaking you're going to be using city water all right this is your water heater it works on either gas or electric the switches are inside this is the drain plug right here all right um, there's really to drain it you're obviously going to take this plug out but for, make sure that you use this valve and let the pressure out of the tank first otherwise you'll get drenched all right this is just a, a plug to uh, if you want to purchase a solar battery charger um, you just get it's a solar panel that that portable and you can just plug it into here and and use it to charge your battery uh, that's where you would plug it in okay your hitch We'll show you when you get here how to operate the hitch. It's a Husky center line uh, weight distribution hitch with built in sway control. So we're going to show you everything, but in case you need to refresh your memory, you can always go to Husky center line and they've got online videos that'll tell you the same thing. So if you're out traveling somewhere and you need your memory refreshed, you can always um, uh, go online to that and uh, get that taken care of. So, anyway, th this is a sprayer right the nozzle is around here I'll have to find it for you it's in this thing here but it hasn't been installed yet but basically it, there's a spray port on the trailer and that's a quick connect right there so okay you've got cranks this crank here is a pull down there this one is for the in case your tongue jack fails you can crank it manually and then this one is for stabilizer jacks it's just a three-quarter inch hex um, like for so for the for this one here you can also use a three-quarter inch socket with a drill which is what most people do these days all right okay you got a deep cycle marine battery two 30 pound LP tanks this is an automatic changeover LP regulator um, you're basically this is just a, a a way to check the tanks to see if there's LP in them see right now it's saying that it's red saying it's empty so you'd point it at this tank. This one's not on. So when you turn it on, do this correctly here. It'll show full. Okay. Um, you got a power tongue jack, and uh, that I told you you could use that crank that I just showed you. So you'd pull this plug out of the top, and you can crank it manually. All right. And here we have a. a sewer hose, a dump hose. We have an adapter to adapt your 30 amp plug down to a 15 amp so you can plug it in at home. Remember you you can't really run the air conditioner off of 15 amps at home. It'll eventually pop a circuit breaker. Everything else in the trailer is no problem. But if you're just going to plug straight into a 15 with the uh, uh, the air conditioner will pop a circuit breaker in your house. So the, your cord is 30 feet um, and it's 30 amps. Okay. Your slide out is in right now. These are service panels for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in here. This is just for service, but this, this line should always be hanging out So uh, because the, the refrigerator uh, creates condensation. You want it to drain outside your trailer. 
Here's where you dump your tanks. Okay, I'm looking back here to see what we've got here just for one second. Okay, all right, so these are your tanks. This is the black one, of course. The gray one is over there. So basically you're gonna hook your hose up to here. You put the rest of the, the other end of the dump station. You're gonna pull the, the valve and dump it. That's black. Black is the black tank holds toilet water in and waste. The gray holds sink and shower water. So you're gonna dump the black first, then you're gonna dump the gray because the gray is cleaner water than the black. That's that's the only reason. So it helps clean out the hose. Um, now this also has a black tank flush, which is a good thing to have. You come back here to this area, and this is the black tank flush. So you'd hook your hose at the dump station and right here. Got a little light here so you can see that's all that is. You can also operate the water pump from here. Anyway, um, like it says here, make sure your, your uh, black tank valve is open before you turn the water on. But what happens is it's got jets inside the black tank, and it'll, it'll, uh, if, you, if you do this, it'll clean out the tank even better. Keep your sensors clean so you get a better reading on your monitor panel. So it's a good thing to do, all right? Now, I mentioned you could, uh, you have city water hookup, and then you'll have your, your uh, filler on the side. Well, right here uh, is where you hook your city water up. That's normally what you're going to use. Now, I noticed on this one, they have a, a tank fill over here also, which we see sometimes. Um, so when, it's in, when this blue valve is in this position, you can see the little drawing here. That's regular city water. When you put it in this position, it will fill your demand tank without disconnecting it here. So you've got two, two ways to fill your tank. Okay. Um, this is a, a, just, I told you you have that sprayer. Well, this is the, where it connects right here. This is the quick connect. All right. All right. Okay, so the housing up there is for a backup camera. This is pre-wired for a backup camera. If you want to get one, you have to get the Furion camera, that brand that fits in that housing. Uh, we sell them here. You can talk to our parts people. Either way, if you purchase it, wherever you purchase it, you got to get the one that fits in that housing. That way you can see when you're backing up and see when you're driving down the road what's happening behind you. Also, while we're looking up, you have to inspect the roof of this trailer and every other trailer uh, three times a year. You're going to do it in the spring, the fall, and then once in the middle of the summer. So you're just going to go up on the roof, walk around, look at all the seals on the roof. Uh, it's sealed with a lap sealant called Dicor. So you're going to inspect everything. And when you see separation starting or cracking starting, you're going to have it taken care of. Um, odds are you'll go years without having to do that, but you could have to do it next year. You just don't know. That's why you're inspecting it. So you got to do it three times a year to protect your investment. All right, this here is a quick connect for a grill okay so that's all that is um, you got that you connect the mail into there whoops let me get a better picture I'm sorry the mail into there let it go and then there's a valve here to turn on and off okay so that just hooks up to your propane tanks and you can run a low pressure appliance off of that okay let's go inside let me look a little bit this way okay so we can put your awning out which is right here. So we're going to extend it and out it goes. So it'll keep going and you keep rolling it out until you see the awning tube. When the, when the black awning tube appears, it means all the fabrics unrolled, has been unrolled, and uh, so you stop right there. Okay, never leave it out in, when you're not at the campsite. Um, it can get damaged really quickly by the wind, so whenever you're leaving the campsite, you just roll it in. That's the simplest way to do it. Okay, so we got some lights. You also have an LED strip on your awning right there. Yeah, your slide out is here, so we're going to put it out. Now, this slide out runs off of the battery, so you know, if you're parked somewhere and you just want to get back there to use the kitchen or the refrigerator or whatever, get into the bedroom, you just have to bump it out. You don't have to plug it in or anything like that. Let it go out till it starts ratcheting, which is coming up. There you go. That'll do the same thing coming in. That just keeps it from overextending or over-retracting. 
All right, so let me get some more light in here if I can. Hold on. All right. All the all the lights have a button in the middle too, so you can select them separately. Okay. You have storage under here. This is where people put the table. Right under there. Okay. When they're not using it. Um, I guess we'll start over here. We get the table out of the way here. Okay, so you have a a TV a backer here to hang a TV bracket for your television and some that's where the port the wires go through now you're going to want to um, and you have uh, also let me see I just want to look around here because I want to give you the right information here okay so that's good so if you're gonna buy a bracket for this spend the extra money and get one that's that locks into place when it's closed therefore it won't swing open when you're traveling number one and number two if you don't do that you have to use straps and the straps are black straps that are always hanging there. You don't really, it's not really attractive. So if you just spend a little extra money, get one that locks into place, that's the way to go. Your radio, you can stream off of uh, the USB, which is over here. Right? You can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth so you can play your MP3s off your phone or tablet. It has two zones for the speakers, plus this remote here, by the way. But it has number one zone, which is inside the trailer. Two is outside the trailer. Um, so it does a lot of things. There's an AM, FM radio. So you can um, uh, do pretty much anything you need with it while you're camping. Considering you are camping. Okay, this is a power converter here. This device converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. Everything that can run in 12 volt DC in a trailer does. Some things have to be AC power, like the microwave or the air conditioner. So you have regular household circuit breakers here, and they're labeled. Okay, so uh, that handles the 110 AC side of it. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You see, you got regular automotive fuses there, um, and these are also labeled up there, and so you can see. Uh, what they go to now if they ever blow they'll actually light up so you can see them and you can actually see them glowing through this perforation here All right although they're not going to blow unless there's something wrong with the appliance or something like that um if they keep blowing there's another issue obviously but but they're there to protect the system and that's the important thing so um this is also a battery tender so it'll sense how much energy your battery has and if, it, if it's totally charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep your charge, as long as you're plugged into shore power. Now, that's of course, you have to be plugged in. Um, obviously, your, your tow vehicle will charge your battery also while you're pulling it. So between the tow vehicle and the power converter, you should be in good shape. Now, this is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. It, can text, uh, it, it detects carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas leak. So if it goes off, you go outside, you shut off your gas, take your family out there, and figure out what's going on. It should always be green like that. If it's not, you want to get it serviced. All right. So, the range. I hope that, yeah, I did turn the gas on. So, all right. So, this just sparks to light. This is a spark if you turn it clockwise. So you're just going to turn this to light. It's going to take a minute. There you go. So it just lights like that. It's very simple. Let me see if I can get both of them in the picture here. All right, let's do it this way. There you go. Okay, so that works for all three burners. The oven is a little bit different. It does not spark. So you have to use a grill lighter for the oven. It has to have a long neck on it so you can reach inside there. Back here, at the very back, I'm trying to get a picture of it, is the pilot light. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the oven knob, you push it to pilot, or turn it to pilot. Then you're going to depress it like that. You're going to hold it in. You keep it depressed. Then with the other hand, you're going to spark it and light the pilot light back there. When it lights, you hold this for another 10 or 15 seconds to get to operating temperature. Then you're going to go to whatever, or whatever temperature you want, and uh, it'll cycle on and off like a regular oven. 
But when you go back to off, obviously the flame goes off, but so does the pilot light. So you got to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Now this um, trailer has to be winterized like every other trailer. Now you'll have to educate yourself a bit if you don't know, I mean, or else you'll have to uh, take it and have it done. But basically speaking, the, the first rule of winterizing is you can't get water, or um, excuse me, you can't get antifreeze inside the water heater. So they, to avoid that, they give you bypass valves on the back of the water heater. So you'd have to bypass the water heater first, then uh, you would pump the antifreeze in. So keep that in mind, that's important. Okay, so this is your thermostat here. You're just going to hit it once to light it up, then you can cycle through. You can see that that's fan. Fan is, uh, let me go back here. The fan is the um, air conditioner running without the compressor. There's the air conditioner. That's the heat, the furnace, and that's off. Everything has a lag time now, so give it a good five seconds to turn on or off because the, um, it doesn't immediately react when you, when you change it. So um you have a backer here for another tv plus antenna and power so you can hang a tv in here this is the escape window very simple you just go like this you can use it like that for ventilation if you want but to escape you'd push this all the way through obviously then you would grab this red tab pull the screen out and out you go okay the refrigerator is a domatic gas absorption refrigerator um, it runs on 110 AC or tw or, or uh, LP gas. Okay, nice size freezer. So basically, on and off. So that's on. Then you're gonna you can select auto. The reason you want to select auto is because auto means electric. Electricity takes parameters, so it always searches out electricity. 110 AC. Um, if it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to gas. On the, also, if you're using it at the campground on, on electricity and you have a power outage, it'll automatically switch over to gas. So you can also run a dedicated gas like that. Now, if this check light comes on, it means it didn't light, it faulted. So then you would just shut it off and turn it back on again until it cycle through. Push the rest of the air out of the line so it'll light. But generally, you're going to have it on auto. Okay. The other thing to, other thing to know about this refrigerator is this thing here is the thermistor. You want to, and you see there's a sticker there that says if you go higher with it, it's cooler, lower is, is warmer, uh, warmer is lower. So you're going to go up as high as you can with this and keep it that way, except on a rare occasion when it's getting cold outside if you start frosting up, that sort of thing. But generally, you're going to have it up all the way. All right, let's see what I've got here. Uh, smoke detector, of course. Um, let me see. Of course, the bed comes up, and there's a little foot locker under there, underneath there. The range hood I told you about with the vent. If you're going to use the range hood fan, you're going to open that baffle on the outside of the trailer so it, so it can flap freely and vent. You got a light there. Microwave works like any other microwave. Nothing unique about it. The bathroom, shower, and sink work like any other. You have a vent with a fan on it, which you're going to use that when you use the shower so you can pull the humidity out. These things are built very tight. Also, this GFCI here, um, all the plugs in the trailer, including the one outside, are wired through this one. So if you're using a coffee pot outside and it pops, this is where you reset it. Last but not least, the toilet. The bottom line of, of an RV toilet is you can't use it dry. See, this is just residual water. Um, so it, that's how it operates anywhere, how it flows out. So what you do, you get to the campground, you'll uh, pull into your campsite, you're going to hook up your water and your power, then you're going to come in here and you're going to take your toilet chemical, whichever chemical you decide to use. There's a zillion different kinds, most of them are pretty much the same thing. Um, but uh, they come in powder form and liquid form, whatever you decide to use, you read the directions and put one dose right in there. Then you're going to stand on the pedal and water will come swirling out. Um, that's the black tank directly below. So basically you're going to uh, put about a gallon or two of water in there um, just to get started. So you never use it without chemical and water in it. So when you first start using it, you put a little bit of water with some chemical in there. Now if you were going to stay in the same campground, for example, and you, you filled your black tank and you're going to have to dump it, so you dump the black tank and now the black tank's empty you would, and you're staying on the campsite, you would come back in here, put the chemical in there, step on it, and put some water in there, 
to get to use it again. You just can't use it without chemical and you gotta have a little bit of water to get started. Also, if when you flush it, it'll only fill about up to there. So that's just so it doesn't slosh out going down the road. So you can add water to it before you use it. You can see that there's I can move the pedal without the trap opening in the toilet. That'll activate the water valve. And so you can fill this up as high as you want before you use it. But you just have to do that each time before you use it. Alright? Simple enough. Okay, I want to go back to the control panel for a second. Here we are up here. So these are these are I told you that um you can light the water heater here, right? You turn it on here. Um, the water pump I told you about is right here. All right, then you can check your levels, your battery's charged. Fresh water tank still has a little bit in the tank because we're uh, water testing it. But you can see it's one third full. It graduates up in one third increments, so it's full. The lights will light up as it fills. Black tank is empty. Gray tank is empty. Some trailers have two gray tanks, so um, if yours has two, then you would, you, would, you would use this one, otherwise you would just disregard it. Okay, so that's it. I think we're good now. Let me see. Every appliance in here has a manual, and they're inside here, right? You can also refer to online manuals. All the manufacturers have product manuals now. Uh, they Starcraft, I'm sure I haven't seen a video for this one on their line, but they probably have one. Um, most most manufacturers do these days. So because of the virus, we we have to do it this way. Um, so if you have any other questions, you can call us and we can talk you through it. We'll do anything we can to help you. You can always research yourself a little bit and, and answer any questions you have, or you may be experienced to know all this already. I don't know. So um, okay. Well, thanks for purchasing at National RV Detroit, and goodbye.